Hello, welcome to episode 31 of the Overtime Podcast with me, your host, Tony Sixwing, and my co-host, Laura Quinting. Hi! Apparently we're making more videos. Also, though, just let you guys know, if you guys want to watch some Let's Plays of something, I am now running a Let's Play of Learn Japanese Survive Hiragana Battle, where you can learn Japanese with me as we play it. Ace Academy, which is a no which is a visual novel slash dating sim, and a mod for Sins of Soul Empire, and I'm thinking about doing a Cities Skylines Let's Play over there on Six Wing Gaming. So if you guys want to go over there, links on the main channel page. Now, Laura wanted to talk about something and get my reaction. Laura? Okay. Um, so, today, when I was at work, one of the surveys that we had to do, um, my job, well, one of my many jobs that I do, because I, I can never just have one job, apparently. Um, this particular job I asked to survey to people who lived in Illinois, but I thought that this particular topic would be interesting to get, um, as both me and Tony are from different areas at the moment, and this could be a very real thing for all states to think about enacting. Well, um, I was asking people in Illinois how they would feel about having their governor, which is J.B. Prisker and Mike Madigan, um, which is, I guess, their rep for the House or something like that, um, enact a change of their fixed income tax rate, which is between 495 to 5%, get changed to a graduated income tax rate, which would be based on, um, say, you make like 30K and your neighbor makes like 500K. You guys would be paying different income tax rates, and the person who pays more would probably be the person that makes more. Um, um, that's already typically a thing. But I guess on the state level, Illinois was not one of those places. So I think to a degree it's done on a federal level, but I think states have the choice um, whether or not they want to do it for their own like state, if that makes sense. Well, here's the thing I think about the whole graduated tax rate. I understand, um, you know, how people feel. They think that, the you know, the more you make, the more you should be taxed. What people don't understand is taxation is a percentage. And to be fair, if we want to be equal, treat everyone equal and whatnot, then we need to have a tax rate that reflects that. So what we need to do is tax everyone the same amount on percentages uh, in states and federal levels. Because, yeah, the people who make more money could afford more, but... All that taxing you more when you make more does is incentivize you to not make any more money, which is bad for the economy. Because seriously, if I'm going to make to a certain point and just have to pay more taxes, pay more taxes if I'm comfortable where I'm at, where is my incentive to, to make more money? I'm just going to get more tax taken out of it. Like when I was working part time, I didn't see more than about 19% at the top end. And then when I started working full time, both in Michigan and here in Indiana, I've seen about a quarter of my paycheck go to the government every week. So it's like I only make 32k a year, and I pay 25% between state, local, federal, and uh, Medicare, Medicaid. So I actually paid um, when I was getting paid pretty good at my one old job. They even had me pay county taxes. Depends on the county. Some counties don't have county taxes. My county has county taxes, but like when we lived in Travis, Travis, Grand Travis County didn't have any county taxes for income. It depends on the county and the state. And some states don't have an income tax. Right. And to be quite honest, guys, the income tax was never properly ratified, which means even though they added it to the Constitution, it wasn't properly added, which means it's null and void, which means the income tax is technically an illegal tax. So, you know, that whole thing. And I also think income tax and property tax are essentially theft and saying that you can't own your own property. I mean, I get taxing, like, sales and stuff like that, you know, taxation on transactions, because you have to fund the government somehow, but income tax and property tax are complete and utter BS, no matter which way you put it. The income tax, from what I could, um, so this prompt had led to them saying, 
oh, well, um, instead of this fixed tax, um, why we should vote for the graduate income tax, because I'm assuming the survey was trying to get more people to be on board with it, was they said that they would be using the extra income, because obviously, um, if you guys know much about Illinois, at least in Chicago, there's a decent amount of people that are making some bank over there. I don't know about the surrounding areas. The mostly in the but, mob. But anyways, um, you have a couple millionaires and shit that are probably could stand to, you know. Well, anyways, um, they're saying that those people, if we moved, if they moved to this graduated system, that money would be used to get over this whole coronavirus pandemic and be able to bring back the revenue once this is all said and done. No, it won't. Meaning that it would, like, somehow make it so that, you know, the economy would be back on track and that's what, where the money would you be used for. You can't tax the economy into prosperity. Well, it wouldn't be like now, I'm saying. No. Here's the thing. All that's going to do is take those people and they're going to go to a state that doesn't have income tax or has a better tax rate or whatnot because those people have that kind of money. The people who live in California, they don't, the rich people in California, they don't live in California. They work in California, they have homes in California, but they pay their taxes and they live in other states. So all those actors and stuff, they don't have their ad, their living address in California. They have a, they have a, they keep a house there, but they're not residents. Yes. Yes. Who is that? My sister. Can you just tell her hi? Well, it's this hi. <laughs> Go away. What do you want? Okay, good night. Have be No, you go. Seriously? Yes, seriously. Hmm. Oh, apparently my sister's calling stuff. Her friends and who want to make a YouTube channel. But back to taxes. Mm. Uh, those people don't live in California. They live in other states where the taxes are lower, so they don't have to pay so much taxes because the California taxes are so high. So there's all that, you know, together. I think stuff. it depends on the person. Some people just pay it. Some people do. It depends if they want to live in California. But you, but here's what this is. It's a phony way of trying to do wealth redistribution, and be, due to especially the corruption, especially in Illinois of all places, where the where the where the police force in Chicago is still on the mob's payroll to this day. That money is not going to go towards what they say it's going to go towards. It's going to disappear into the pockets of some politician or somebody else who wanted that money. They'll get the people to think that it's for the people, but then they'll turn around and use it for other things, like Whitmer and the roads. Up the gas tax for the roads, then she gives it to her buddies. Um, mm. So, that's what always happens. Here's the thing. the, And I'm not trying to put one party against each other, but if you notice, in all the places where the Democrats control, mostly left, not all Democrats are this way, but a lot of them, Taxes end up being higher than what Republicans control states are. But those states, despite the bigger government and more government spending, end up actually being in a worse state sometimes. I mean, look at San Francisco and Los Angeles. They decide to do all this stuff to be supposedly caring in this. So they let the homeless people stay on the street, told the people who were trying to make mobile homeless, mobile little homes on carts for people who are homeless home so they had a roof over the head and then they said no you can't have these destroyed them all and sent the people back on the streets back into the tents where they weren't safe and told them to try to go into the dangerous homeless shelters that are overflowing there while they allowed it there to be shits needles and people shooting up Ill illicit drugs in the, in the middle of the street but they won't arrest them because we need to be caring and understanding 
And yeah, I do believe the drug war has failed and we need to find some way to go about this better. But just letting people continue with bad behavior, dangerous behavior, self-destructive behavior, and also creating behavior that goes against what actually helps them. Like those homes that were on these cartwheels. They were giving these people a place where they could keep stuff and they could get back on their feet. The government says, no, those aren't up to code. And the guy, other guy, rich guys around them said they were eyesore. So the government destroyed them all and told the guys to go get back in the tents where they can get stabbed at night and all their shit stolen and can't get back off the street. Because as long as they're on the street and they can vote and that party says, we're going to help you out and blah, 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 just let us more, that party uses it to stay in power. The Democratic Party has created a system, at least in California, where they continue to strive about helping the poor and helping the little guy. But they keep the little guy in his position because they tell him, oh, we just need more government, just need more government, just need more government. It gives them more power and they can tax more and then they take more money and put it in their own pockets. It's not about helping the poor. It's about putting money in their pockets. I mean, Rubkins aren't that great either. They have their own problems. But I time and time again see democratically led states up taxes, say they're doing it for the poor, and then do nothing to help the poor. Well, if you have a, have a Florida, which is a stupid state, but Florida, they actually have a town there with a higher homeless population than San Francisco, but you see none of them on the streets because they, instead of shaming people and trying to put them in these horrible places, they gave people these... We'll give you shelter, but you got to find yourself a job. You got to clean yourself up. And they put conditions and they help people be back on their feet with those conditions in place. Instead of just letting them lounge about. Because people will lounge about. That's human nature. If you just keep giving them out. It's like the old proverb. Uh, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. And what they're trying to do in Florida, in this one town. I forget the name of the town at the moment. They're trying to teach the man to fish. California is trying mm -hmm. to just give the man all the fish so he'll never know how to fish so they have to keep so that they can keep them dependent on them. Well, the guy that right. needs the food dependent on the government. And that's the that's the entire scheme right there. Because the more they're dependent on them, the longer these people can stay in power and stay in office and collect just keep collecting paychecks and voting themselves raises out of other people's money. Now, I'm not saying. Now, what we really should be focusing on instead of a tax like that is getting companies to realize that if they pay everyone a living wage and don't get greedy and just raise prices enough to cover that, which actually wouldn't that be, be that much of a raise in prices, and get landlords to realize that they can make some money without gouge. They don't need to get extravagantly wealthy off these rental properties, you know, like get them to realize, hey, this is unaffordable, it's unsustainable. If we can get them to realize that. Living wage and an affordable rent system creates a sustainable, thriving economy where all the money that they're circulating down just helps to keep it growing with infinite amounts of growth at that point because everyone can feed themselves, everyone has savings, there's very little debt. If we can get them to realize that that system is not only sustainable, but it's exponentially successful because of math, not morals, not politics, math, then... We don't need as much taxation because once we get to that point, we don't need the government there for a lot of these things that they're in there right now because no one has the money to take care of them themselves. Like, if we got everyone jobs, made sure every job paid a living wage and everyone could afford to pay a job that paid a living wage, because I do believe that if, if, the, if the bigger companies were selling it at the same price and could still make a profit a living wage, then mom and pop shop could also raise their prices and stuff and all that stuff. But big companies want to keep that because they can afford to have that smaller profit margin because they have so many stores and pay the higher wage and keep the prices down to push the mom and pop shop out of business. It's not the higher wages that push them out of business. It's the big box retailers who keep the prices down to try to drive them out of business. And at which point the big boxes will raise those prices again once all the mom and pop shops are gone and the small businesses. Once all the competition is gone, those prices go up in to what they should have gone up to the minute that the, pr the raises went into effect because they want to destroy competition. Yeah, I've seen a lot of like places have to get out of business because like Meyer, Walmart, Target end up like being nearby and no one wants to go to, uh, at least if you remember TC, a lot of people can't afford shopping downtown because it's like, you know, they want to charge tourist prices. 
to people that live there. Yeah, that's more of a tourist town problem, though. That's any tourist town. And if you notice, a lot of the downtown shops... Some of them are actually quite affordable, like Horizon before they closed. They had some pretty decent deals on books, but a lot of them were like a suit shop. They were high-end. They were high-end retail. Yeah. So even if it wasn't a even if it wasn't a tourist town, that kind of retail would still charge those prices. So, but what happens is, I understand. I, I go to Walmart for a lot of stuff. I you know and. I don't always 100% agree with the whole shop local thing because, you know what? Yeah, shop locals support all these small businesses, right? Because it supposedly stays in the community. Okay, these three shops that together provide everything Walmart does employ 30 people between them. That Walmart down the world employs 150 and does everything in one spot. Which company is better for my community? The three here that employ 30 people together, or the one that employs 150? I mean, yeah, still, the shop local and stuff, and, you know, sometimes you get better deals, and they have nice customer service and stuff. But the whole keep the money in the community, how about shop local because they have better customer service, and they're nicer? <laughs> Most of the time. That's kind of what I do and stuff. And also, I find local diners and stuff that aren't these big chains... Also have better food. The quality Wait, of man. local is much higher. Uh, I don't know if you remember Oriana, but that place didn't impress me that much. That's because it's a freaking organic health food store. None of them impressed me. I mean, I if you've ever been to a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's, I beg to differ on that. Well, you remember Travis, I'd rather be at, go to Janice Hamburg or Randy's Diner than go to McDonald's. Anyone would rather go to Janice Hamburg than McDonald's. No, but you get my point. They don't. There's not a lot of chain dining dine-in restaurants that would serve about the same stuff. I feel like that the charm of like going to a really cool retro diner has like died. Like I don't see them around as much. Like a good old fashioned. And that's like, kind of funny diner. because those retro diners have reasonable prices, and the food is good, and the portions are humongous. Yeah, they have excellent food, and like. F I mean, it may look a little run down and whatnot, but who cares? The food's cheap. The people are nice, and they give me they fill my plate up. Well, if I go to some place like let's say I don't think they're open anymore, but Beggar Dave's. They give me Better a handful. Sucks. Sucked. But yeah, no, they overcharge you, give you a handful of fries and this little ass burger, and it's like, what the hell? I can go down. Like, there's a reason. I can why pay they half of down. this. Yeah, but it's like, I can pay half this price down the street to a smaller local place, local dino, get a bigger burger, more fries, a pop, and an appetizer for what I paid for just your meal here. So that kind of, exactly. that's why you should shop local. Don't shop local because local, you want to support local business. No, shop local because local, at times, has better quality. Shop for quality, not location. Yeah. Th like, the only, to me, if I'm going to shop local, it's because it's, like, good shit. Don't shop local just to shop local. That's a stupid idea. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, here's the thing. The big box stores have their, have their you know, uses. People try to say, no one should shop at Walmart. Here's the problem. Walmart is one of, if not the largest employer in the country. Which means, if Walmart went bankrupt because nobody shopped there, a shit ton of people would lose their jobs, and that impact on the economy, on you, on everybody, would be way greater than if a few local shops shut down. I mean, it's not good that the local shops get shut down, but here's the thing. People tend to go into business, and for themselves and want to run these shops and they never update anything. They always think I can run on small margins all the time, blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. If you're, now I understand coronavirus and stuff hit everybody and people need to shut down without a, you know, without a thing here. But here's the thing. If your profit margins were so small that you went out of business a week into this thing because you had no cash flow, then you probably were already on the way out to begin with. 
or you had just started up and hadn't been on your feet yet. One of those two things. If you've been in business 50 years and a week throws you out and a bad week throws you out of business, something was wrong with your finances. Yeah. I now, mean, now the longer the longer it goes, the more you understand, the more people closing down, but the first guys to close down were the people that got scared, closed before they should or simply never kept a rainy day fund and were bad at business. Yeah. Not that it's a good thing companies get shut down. It's never a good thing when a company closes because, you know, people lose their jobs and whatnot. But that's how our system, how real capitalism works, is if you have a bad business or a bad at business, you go out of business. If you don't do your job, you lose your job. I know it sounds horrible to speak it that way, but like I said before, reality is amoral. It doesn't have a morality to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. To me, like, I like supporting small businesses when I can, but, like, when it comes to it, people need to realize that, like, everyone was like, oh, well, we're so sad that, like, you know, Kmart closed down. Like, I can't believe, like, it's gone. Y'all were not missing that shit or else it would have been open. And you know, yeah, I mean, there's another thing, reason to support local. Because here's the thing. Kmart closes down. Well, Kmart had kind of gone to crap in the last few years. But this diner down the road closes down that, I, that you used to go to as a kid. And it's not going to be around anymore. But they were still nice and still made good food. You're like, I miss that place now. Nobody misses Kmart. Because Kmart Maybe was crap the at the Maybe the people that worked there. You know what? The people that worked there were the ones who couldn't get a job anywhere else. Yeah. Because if... Do you remember the last time you were even in a Kmart? I when remember, I was working there and it was getting liquidated. Yeah, well, last time I was in a Kmart before they closed, it was probably a year or so before they closed, I went in there for something. People were kind of rude. The place was run down. Nothing was being kept up. The computers were slow. Isn't Sears and Yonkers closed? Yeah, we don't have a Sears anymore where I live. They shut down our Sears. And tore it down. I don't think Yonkers exists either. Or if it does, it's... I haven't heard of it. Here's the thing. Big companies and little companies both did this whole thing. They built their companies on debt. And they thought they could keep making more money than what the payments were, so they never paid off the debt, and they kept accumulating more debt. Then they all went bankrupt, because no one wanted to pay anyone a living wage, which meant the unsustainability of the economy caught up to these businesses that were already struggling. Mm -hmm. Because right now, we actually make less an hour on, min on federal minimum wage than they, than they did with inflation in the 70s. So the minimum wage Wait, because of inflation has actually gone down. It's seven twenty eight or something seven twenty eight or seven fifteen hours federal. And it if you go back to the seventies and seven twenty eight. I thought it was like nine or ten. Uh that's state in Michigan. I'm talking about federal minimum wage. Oh. But if the federal has kept up with inflation from the seventies, it'd be twelve dollars an hour. Oh, wow. Which means companies have actually had the wages go down by that much. So here's my question. If you could afford to pay in the 70s what's equivalent to $12 an hour today, why can't you afford to pay $12 an hour today? They should be. The, the sad That's thing the is question. a lot of people that I know, like myself included, like my main job does not pay me $12 an hour. It pays me 11 yeah, but that's the thing. They keep saying how raising the wage is going to skyrocket all the prices. It's like, well, why won't all the prices skyrocketed when you had this equivalence on the wages in the 70s? Okay, it might be not be 12, it might be like 9 or 10, but still. You're looking at a cup. The point is, when you include inflation... They're fighting against it so that wa their wage costs can continue to drop and then they continue to say how wages cost them so much. Out of everything else that's gone up, 
wages have gone down due to inflation across the board over the last 40 to 50 years. And oh, wow. everything else has gone up. Because of inflation, stagnant wage is a dropping wage. If your wage is stagnant, it is shrinking. So wages have shrank, which is what allowed the housing bubble to happen, what allowed this to happen, what's allowed the student loan crisis to happen. They shrank the wages, they shrank the size of things, which increased the cost of everything to everybody. And then they say, well, we can't give raises to everybody. We won't be able to make a, make a living. It's like, you made a living in the 70s. Did you just not grow your business enough to do that or not raise your prices enough? Because all you have to do to do this is everything goes up by 2.4% every year and everyone's wages go up by 2.4% minimum every year just to cover inflation. That would just keep everything exactly where it's at for the same cost. So there's that whole thing. I understand there's like market influences and stuff. So, you know, tying everything to inflation isn't exact. But when McDonald's grew so much that they're now a multi-billion dollar company and they were paying the equivalent of $12 an hour to everyone back in the 70s, why can't they do it now? Why are they the biggest lobbyists to eliminate the minimum wage? Yeah, I don't know. Like, the thing is, at one time, you only needed the husband to work, and he could provide for all of his kids. Not saying that I'm disagreeing with, like, both no, parents should work. Both no, parents should be able to work. Both parents but, should be able to work if know. they choose to do so. But even studies have shown one parent working, one staying at home is better for the children's psychology. They turn out better, they are better well behaved, and they are happier when one parent is in the home all the time instead of shipping them off to daycare. Right, but, I mean, you know, if they want to work... If they want to work, but it should be a choice. It shouldn't be a necessity. Right, like nowadays, both both people have to work full-time for them to make ends meet. Yeah, here's the thing. The kind of job I do at my work, in the 70s or 80s, that job would buy me a house. In now the kind of job that you have, out. like having kids with your job wouldn't even be feasible. Like you would have never seen them. Exactly. But here's the thing. There are people in my work with kids, and their spouses have other jobs, too, that pay less than my job does. And here's the thing, though. That job in the 70s, 80s, would have paid for a house, raised a family. Right. Nowadays? No. Back in the 70s, 80s, you could pay for college with a summer at McDonald's. But then the government insured all the college loans. The loans went up, the colleges jacked up the prices, didn't actually increase the quality of education became brainwashing mills and they got everyone to get liberal and then all the people knew that they would tie them into having to work for the education system for their lives and keep them dependent on the education system so they told everyone to go get liberal arts degrees not saying about yours but seriously how much of it have you used you should get st if you're going to work go to college you should get a stem degree but at least you didn't go into debt for your degree you worked your butt off to get it but they wanted to get everyone into debt for their degree, so they had to work for academia and just stay in it so they could control everybody and just keep getting more and more and more of their money. Because, right. hey, the government's insuring the loans, so everyone can get these loans. And then they just decided to make uh, make it to where everyone for everything essentially needs a college degree. Soon you're going to need a college degree just to work at McDonald's because the college degree is becoming the new diploma, but you have to pay for it. That's why I'm behind at least two, at least the first two years of all college being free. Because if we're going to require it to make a, if we're going to create a society that requires you to do this in order to even get the bare minimum job, then society should pay for it, just like we do with regular school, like elementary and high school. Right. Now, I also, but I do also believe that in college, that payment should should be conditional. It should be based on what you're getting for a degree and your GPA. If you don't get a good, keep a good GPA and you aren't getting a degree that's going to be monetizable, you know, like you, 
like you go to school for some sort of studies where the only thing you can do is be is something you know essentially it's not going to make you any money Mm-hmm. then we're not going to pay for it. Now, I understand paying for, like, a teaching degree, because we do need teachers. Yeah. Despite that, the fact that some of them don't do such a good job. But this, someone has to teach everybody, and people don't have time to do it themselves right now, and they're not always the greatest at it. So, and they're definitely not doing a great job of doing it at home. No. They're not doing such a great job in schools anymore either, but that's not the teacher's fault. That's the fault of the guys who are making the curriculum who mm-hmm. decided to tell them that they want, don't need to teach them how to write their own name, teach them math that makes it or everything's a mathematical proof, so essentially it eliminates your ability to do math in your head, so you have to use a calculator for everything in, in the name of making math easier, which it doesn't, and not teaching anyone any, any history in elementary school or middle school or high school. They have been dumbing down the schools for years. Yep. That's not the teacher's fault. They don't make the curriculum. It's like blaming the teachers for a bad curriculum is like blaming the guy at the supermarket because the prices are shit. <laughs> like he has any control over that. But those sort of degrees, as long as you keep a good GPA and get a job right away, your school will be paid for. If you don't and you just slack off, then you're going to have to pay, find a way to pay that money back. So, you know... Make the free education conditional. And I don't see, I don't know many people that are against that. Because it wouldn't pay for everyone's education. That'd be unfeasible. But it'd be, but for the people who it does pay for, it's an investment into the economy, the society, and everything else. And in the long run, pays for itself in the, in the, uh, outcome of the growth of the economy, more people making more money, you know. You know, all the good things that come with people who got good degrees and when they got good jobs and grew things with their own two hands. As you do that. Mm-hmm. I'm recording my podcast. Who are you talking to? Oh, my sister. She's trying to quote her thing, telling me to be quiet. You talking too loud? Well, she's, she thinks I am. Go away. Oh. Hmm. Good thing we got no listeners, I guess. We're pre recording. Sisters. Sisters. Brothers. Sisters. Brothers. Sisters. Brothers. Sisters. Brothers. Okay, okay. Brothers. Can we get back on topic even though we weren't really on one? Yeah. Go away. Maybe. Grace, I'm trying to do my podcast. Okay. I love you. You and your friend are weird. It's the truth and what are those? My character and our uh, symbol on logo. Oh, uh, him going over time. It was a joke, but it didn't work. Okay, go ahead, Laura. No, you were talking, remember? Oh, yeah. What was I saying? We were going on about, um, like, the living wage and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, education. So, the education system is crap, but we'd be able to, you know, with the uh, help of people getting the education without having to take on the burden, they could keep more of their wealth and put that into communities, buying homes and doing things that are good for the economy. Because right now, even tradesmen are crippled by the debt of having to pay for their own tools because of the because of the apprenticeship for licensing that has been put into place by lobbyists and by the fact that these apprenticeships, you have to buy all your own tools, got to pay for an education. People are like, oh, they'll train you. No, they won't. They'll expect you to already gone to a trade school, which is a co- two years of college, which you had to pay for. You had to pay mm-hmm. for your own tools. You better have your own truck. And if you're going to try to go in through the union, you better know about how to do it coming out of high school because you're going to be on a two. You're going to have to go to a forty hour aptitude test. So they are going to see if you even have the. You're going to have to go through a week of seeing if you even have the knack for it. Here's the thing: some there's people like me who have the knack for things, but it takes them a week. To get into the into the rhythm of things and then be the best of it at it of most people that you meet. 
So you're going to fail that one if you're that kind of person. And even if you pass it, you're then on a two-year waiting list to get a job with the union. And then the union is going to pay you about as much as the guy that's not unionized, and he's going to take part of that as union dues. Hmm. Unions are not as good as they used to be. Yeah, I was... And they're hard one to get of my into. Um, friends actually is in the... One of the last unions to exist in Michigan, and he said that while it's nice that he's protected in the fact that he is guaranteed a certain amount of hours during the school year, even if it's hypothetically slow, um, he also has to pay a decent amount in union dues to keep said rights. Essentially, it comes out to the point that it isn't really that much worth it, but he, in his industry, he has to be part of the union to have his job. Which is called right. racketeering. What's that? Uh, well, you threaten somebody if they don't pay you. So mm. if he tries to leave the union and you know, doesn't pay his union dues, he'll lose his job. So you better pay your union dues and you better be part of the union or you aren't going to have a job. Racketeering yeah, is also if they. Racketeering is also, you ever heard of protection money where the guy says, pay me this for insurance? for protection money or insurance in case something happens to you so something doesn't happen to your shop well guess what what that means is if you don't pay him he's going to do something to your shop you're paying him not to trash your crap then you need to do the same thing but monetarily right and many of them are actually controlled by the mob and owned by comp and actually companies that they do work for have weaseled their way in so that the company runs the union So you're part of a union, but the union doesn't protect you for crap because the company runs it. There are several places in this area that the company runs the union, so you're working 12 hours a day, 7 days a week, never get a day off. Oh, but it's union! Mm-hmm. I think people just, like, feel like they have more rights than they actually do. Yeah, they do, and the union's don't protect you as much as they used to because a lot of people in power, like a lot of people in the head of like homeless associations, stuff like that, saw that money coming in and instead of using it for the union, they used it to pay their own salaries for administrating the union. So they just collect the union dues and all that stuff and they pay themselves and they don't protect you one bit, but it's a way to get money out of you and control you and all that stuff. Everything's become a scam because of greed and it's unsustainable. Mm -hmm. because bullies got to be put in charge of everything somehow. Exactly. So. But. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's the whole thing about that one. But back to the whole mom and pop shop thing with them closing down and stuff. Here's the thing. I saw you and you post the stuff about people wanting haircuts. Here's the thing. The protests are not about haircuts. The protests are about the fact that people's business are going to be shut down and the, and the, and the government technically does not have the power to keep you in your home unless it's under martial law. And that has to be declared. They haven't declared it yet. Which means anything to tell you to stay in your home under a national state of emergency without martial law being declared, you still have your constitutional rights. Freedom of movement, freedom to peaceably assemble. So there are many constitutional things. People go along with some of this stuff, you know, just to try to keep the virus from spreading. But on the other hand, they are breaking constitutional law by doing the lockdown. The lockdown is actually unconstitutional on many fronts, and the economic impact is trying to look like a second Great Depression. I mean, but at the same time, like, when Georgia was starting to open their shit back up, they already have over 600 new cases. So even though it is greatly advised that we stay home, and we are basically told to stay home, I think that if the government did nothing, then... You know, that's not good either. Well, they've just found out through antibody testing that a lot more people already had this than they thought. 
and most of the and eighty percent of those six hundred people will never end up will do nothing but will get over it. So that means eighty out of every hundred. That means eight times six. That's four forty eight. So four hundred and eighty of those people won't need to be hospitalized, and then of those other people of the other 120 you have another eight, 80 percent of that who won't even need to be on a ventilator at most they'll have to be on some oxygen which means those people you're looking at only about two percent of the people that have this have to be on a ventilator and those people end up being on it so long that the ventilator kills them before the virus does because of the damage like the ventilator might actually be causing more pneumonia hmm. so and really the only places it's really spreading that much is in big cities i live in large area our numbers are pretty much stabilized and i don't see anybody really staying home well your places are closed aren't they yeah but people are still going to walmart and all the drive throughs are packed well, yeah, but so is my area, but... No, but the way they keep saying it might be on this, might be on that. Well, if it might be on this, might be on that, everyone on that drive through should be infected. The numbers they are touting and the spread rate I am seeing, even with social distancing, slowdown and whatnot, are not computing. Now, first they said 200,000 Americans would die with social distancing. Now it's 60,000. Guess how many the flu cloud kills every year? About 30. So it's about twice as deadly as flu. But that's our 330 million people. I hate to make it a numbers game, but I'd rather it be 60,000 than, well, 330 million, 3.3 million. So then 300 and 26.5 million point seven million because if the economy collapses and our society collapses with it 90 percent of the human population will die within the first 12 to 18 months two percent before versus 90. Wait, not much of where a choice do you get that number from several sources it's it's pretty much considered that due to the lack of skills and lack of resources, that 90% of the population would die from a combination of infighting, disease, hunger, and exposure. People would die of dysentery because sewers back up, because sewers are shut down. Not to mention the radiation from all the nuclear plants going under and melting down. Then you have the warlords and gains criminals who will be going out just raiding and slaughtering people for their resources. Those are things that happen. So, I mean, even if it's not 90%, it's still going to be the majority of the population will not be around. Here, the ma vast majority of humanity will survive. Right. I mean, yeah, it's people's lives, but I'd rather have a society. Because a lot of those people, if they don't, if we do all this stuff and the economy collapses and everything collapses, they're still going to be dead. Yeah. We just add it to the number. Because those people, when they get out, if they survive, but the economy doesn't, they're going to get out. They're going to be weak and tired from having the disease and surviving it. And they're going to be less capable of fighting off new diseases that hit them right away because of everything collapsing and everything else. Or fighting off an, an assailant. Or someone who's trying to hurt them and take their stuff. I hate to make it a numbers game because these are people's lives we're talking about. But in the grand scheme of things... You have to take a dispassionate, logical, kind of heartless view of it in order to make a logical, rational decision. Hmm. So. Never thought of it that way. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I still think if hypothetically everything were to open back up in Michigan right now, I don't think. It would be the best idea in the world. 
No, here's the thing. Yes, keep the dine-in closed. Don't have a bunch of... Don't let there be a bunch of concerts. Keep the movie theaters closed if you want to, because those are kind of petri dishes. But they were talking about the spread. Why, when before they closed everything down, when literally everyone was going to every Walmart and Kroger and all that stuff, why didn't it burn through the entire population just from every being, everyone being packed in the stores if it was that bad? Did they do that forcing mask thing for you guys? Not in Indiana, no. They just enacted that in uh, Michigan. Mm. Was an executive order not a law by the legislature? And the legislature already said she couldn't extend her order. So she's actually acting outside of her power. Which means in court you could fight any ticket or anything. Are you talking about my governor? Or yours? Yeah, your governor. My governor extended it to the 15th. Yes, they said they weren't going to let her extend it anything anymore, really. So, yeah, the Michigan legislature doesn't like her right now. Hmm. I'd be surprised if she completes her term in office at this point. She's going to be forced to resign. Or removed. Interesting. So, I yeah. thought they weren't allowing traveling either, but my one friend was just in Wisconsin a couple days ago. Well, they can say they're not, allow tra they're not allowing traveling, but they can't stop it. I thought people were getting fined for traveling. Well, yeah. Well, then which is it? Well, sorry, I was hearing something. What did I say? You, you were saying how people... Like, I was saying, well, I thought they were fining people. Oh, yeah, uh, they are fining people, but the fines can't be... won't stick. Why because, wouldn't they stick? Because under the Constitution, you have freedom of movement. They can't detain you without pro without cause without arresting you for a crime, and an executive order is is only applicable to federal when it comes to the president to federal agencies and to state state agencies. It cannot apply to citizens. So the fines that they tried to give for people who are fishing and going to church and crap, what happened with that? Did they get those fines or no? The churches? Well, those... No, the people who got fines for doing the drive through mass. The drive through church? Well, actually, those are being thrown out because that's against the uh, freedom of religion in the Constitution. Hmm. The federal Constitution. It's actually in the first part of the First Amendment. Uh, I can actually, uh, just a second, uh, I will pull it up. Bill of Rights. Okay, here is the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohib prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably, to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for regrants of grievances, which essentially means... They can't ticket anybody or tell anybody they can't assemble to protest against the lockdown. But because, if they already find the people, then well, that saying... is that is uh, violating the right to peaceably assemble. As long as you're not rioting, you can't. They can't do anything. But Here's they forced problem. churches to close to begin with. They actually really couldn't do that. Churches just chose to do that out of an abundance of caution. Hmm. Oh, here's one. The right of the people to be secure in their possessions, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizures shall not be violated. No warrant shall issue, but upon probable cause supporting, supported by oath and, or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and person or things to be seized. That one says that civil forfeiture 
is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. And there's also, uh, you got, um, excessive bail should not be required, no cruel and unusual punishment influenced, uh, power delegated. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. There's also a right to, uh, right to, uh, travel between stuff and whatnot. Essentially, they can't lock you up in your house with just detaining you without you breaking the law, without due process, so... But anyways, it's been about 50 minutes. I'm kind of running out of stuff to say. And getting tired. Hmm. So. Okay. Well, I mean, we talked for a decent amount, so. Yep. We'll see you guys next week, and have a good one. All right, bye.